This creamy, rich soap seems fitting for a wintertime luxury bar. We're making hot processed goat's milk and with the scent of a Victoria Rose Garden. If you love watching us make luxury bath products at Thermal Mermaid, be sure to click the like and subscribe and the little bell button so that you're notified when we publish a new recipe. And if you're a hobby soap maker, want to start a small business, or just love the craft of soap making, check out all our videos here at Thermal Mermaid where we're chock full of commentary with notes and tips about the recipes I work on. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to add goat's milk into your hot process soap and different methods that you can try, different ways to scent with rose fragrances, and tips about working with dried flower buds in hot process soap. And don't forget, if you want to reach out directly with questions about this project, you're welcome to come over to our Facebook group and join us over there. The link's at the bottom. This recipe is a six oil combination. To start, I'll melt down most of my oils in the crock pot and leave my two richest, most expensive oils off to the side. This will allow the person who uses the bar to feel the texture and the rich qualities of the shea butter and the cocoa butter in the bar after the other oils have been cooked. Now the first noticeable difference with our slow cooked soap is that we don't need to wait as long for the lye water solution that I just made to cool down. Since I'm adding most of my oils into the crock pot to warm up, we're starting off working at higher temperatures. The oils are melting and the temperature is only going to move higher. Now we do need to keep an eye on the temperature because as the lye water is resting and the oils are getting warmer, they will become closer in temperature in just a few short minutes and that is where we need to add the lye solution. We want the lye and the oils to be within 20 degrees of each other before we mix the soap. Once the soap is emulsified, we'll put the lid on the top and leave it alone to cook for about 20 minutes. Now it's time to keep an eye on the soap and watch it move through the three stages of cooked soap until it reaches a full gel stage. Let me bring you over to this and show you something. After 20 minutes, my soap has not yet reached the first stage, but something is happening. The edges are cooking while the center has started to set and it's starting to become hard. Now we don't want this because the heat can't move through evenly, so this needs to be broken up and mixed. If the water and oils begin to separate, it's okay. Just mix them back together and then let this cook for a while and we should come back to our first stage process. When we check again in 20 minutes, we discover that we're well into the first stage and the top is just starting to move into the second stage. The first stage looks like pudding and you can get a good view of this when I begin to mix. Now make sure you fold the edges into the center and try to bring the soap from the bottom up to the top. Now it's time to add our butters into the recipe. By now we've given plenty of time for the oils and the lye to bond and become soap. We'll add the remaining oils, and some of that will bond with the lye and also become soap, but whatever cannot find any lye left in the pot will remain in an oil form, and it will just float freely in the bar. This is called a super fat because we've superseded the necessary amount of oil to turn everything into soap. Now this will melt on the surface very quickly, and we need to incorporate it in very well. While we wait for the soap to cook, it's time to prepare our additional additives. We'll need to get our colorants and the goat's milk ready. Two colorants we're using in this recipe are a bright lake red pigment and titanium dioxide. Each color gets one teaspoon of colorant and we'll mix that with two tablespoons of corn oil. By blending down the powdered colorant, we'll break up the clumps and make it smooth and even when it comes time to add this. Next, we'll add two large scoops of powdered goat's milk and blend that down into a smooth, silky texture in about four to six ounces of distilled cold water. When we check back on our soap, we can clearly see that we're moving into the second stage of hot process soap cooking, and this looks like a nice loose applesauce texture. All we need to do is mix it up again, 
Put the lid on, let it cook, and check back again in another 30 minutes. The third and final stage is when our soap starts to go through the gel phase. You'll see a slick, glassy sheen throughout the entire soap as you mix and stir. Now the soap is thoroughly cooked and it's ready to be processed. It's still not quite ready to do anything with quite yet because we need to let this cool before we move forward. It's time to turn the heat off and remove the glass pot from the heating element. The soap in your pot can reach temperatures of nearly 200 degrees and we need to let this cool to below 150 before we continue. Just around 150 degrees it's safe to add the goat's milk. If you add it while the soap is still cooking, you'll risk scorching the milk. And if you burn it, it will turn brown and it'll smell burnt. And this will overtake your fragrance and the project can be ruined. So it's important to wait until the soap is cooled. You can also use evaporated goat's milk and you can get that thick creamy texture. The extra water content will evaporate in the curing process and the lactic acid and the fat from the milk will be left behind floating in the bar. Right around 120 degrees, it's time to add our fragrance. The fragrance in this demonstration is Victorian Rose from Nature's Garden. Now, there are dozens of rose fragrances for soap makers out there, and this can be a tough one to shop for because this one often smells like chemicals or it can smell like dollar store fragrances. Victorian Rose smells similar to Crabtree and Evelyn Rose from years ago, and I continue to buy this one, but another recommendation is Rose Garden Fragrance Oil number 211 from Crafter's Choice. And that one has an earthier, a more fresh texture aroma to it. Now you can also get pleasant natural rose by using a combination of essential oils, which is not demonstrated here, but that's included in the recipe found over at thermalmermaid.com. Now it's time to separate the soap into two parts and color each half with the colorants that we prepared earlier. You can see now why we turned our powdered colors into a liquid. We would have never been able to disperse the powder through this entire batch and the colors would have come out patchy and uneven. Once we mix these in well, we're ready to mold the soap. When making goat's milk soap, some people prefer to use fresh goat's milk instead of powdered or a canned product. By using a powdered or evaporated product, I can control the richness in the amount of the goat's milk and the chemistry of the milk doesn't get eaten up by the saponification process. But if you're using fresh milk, then our two powdered scoops is equal to one cup of fresh milk. An entire cup of liquid content is just too much to add to the end product of your recipe. So you'll need to replace eight ounces of milk with eight ounces of the original lye water solution. So if you're working with fresh goat's milk, you put it in at the beginning of the recipe. Now it's trickier to keep the milk from burning this way, so you'll need to freeze the milk and the water together until it forms a soft slush before adding the lye crystals. Once you make your solution and keep the temperature under control as much as possible, add the oils and emulsify as quickly as you can. This will get the soap stabilized and ready for cooking. Fresh goat's milk does take a little more practice. With this recipe, we can spoon the soap directly into the mold in alternating colors. You can give the soap a spoon swirl or just layer it in, but the thick texture does limit your design. Work the soap into the mold so that there are no pockets of air and everything is evenly filled. Now we'll cover the top in dried rosebuds. To keep this looking pretty, you'll need to break up the buds and remove the green hips. Work the buds into the top so they become fixed. And at this stage, the top of the loaf will start to set. And if you don't push the buds into the top, most of them will just fall off the top in 24 hours. Sometime during this process, you might have thought about throwing a cup of those roses right into the crock pot to get a natural rose fragrance or to get the little pieces of the petals through the entire bar. 
In this recipe, it's better to let your dried petals just decorate the top. Dried flowers nearly never pass their fragrance through the saponification process. You'd have to make an oil tincture with the live petals and the oil to use the roses for your fragrance. And this would take several weeks of preparation before you make the recipe so it won't work. Cooking roses into your bar also won't work with this recipe. Red roses turn brown when they cook and the entire pot would look like a brown, muddy compost. It would take over any attempt at coloring your soap. So for this recipe, we leave the decor strictly on the top. After 24 hours, the loaf is set and is ready to cut. So we'll pull it out of the mold and set it on our soap cutter. With large dried flowers, it's best to cut from the side to prevent large drag marks pulling across the soft surface. And now it's finally time for the cutting. And here we have our finished product, goat's milk and roses. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see others, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like the full recipe for this project and hundreds more, come over and visit us at thermalmermaid.com and join us on Facebook. Now let's take a look at our goat's milk and rose bath soap after it has cured for three days for a final result.